Enable. Zimmer Biomet presents India against arthritis in association with News 18 Network. Hello and welcome to this very special show which is India against arthritis. Because arthritis is a disease that we are all familiar with. It's a disease that's often associated with a lot of pain, reduced mobility. And what we're seeing here in India is particularly a rising number of cases when it comes to osteoarthritis, which is a form of arthritis which impacts the cartilage and impacts joints such as the knees, the spine, the wrists, the hips. In fact, uh, all joints uh, could be impacted by osteoarthritis. And uh, while there are uh, treatments available, but there has been a remarkable leap in terms of of the medical technology and the kind of uh, new age treatments which companies are here to deliver. And let's speak now with one such company. We have with us the Vice President for South Asia of Zimmer Biomed. Now, Ziba Biomet is actually a global medical technology leader in managing uh, solutions when it comes to orthopedic issues, particularly osteoarthritis. So I just gave a <clears throat> little preview about, you know, arthritis and the kind of problems that we're seeing here in India in terms of the growing number of cases, women are more at risk, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But first... Tell us a little bit about your company, Zima Biomet, and some of those new age solutions which are being offered. Yeah, so uh, Zima Biomet is a global medical technology company which is uh, focused on uh, improving health and restoring mobility. And we uh, have a comprehensive portfolio of uh, digital and, uh, and integrated and digital robotic technologies which uh, kind of uh, leverage uh, lot of data, data analytics and, uh, and artificial intelligence. So now we've got technology <coughs> coming in when it comes to dealing with osteoarthritis because, you know, typically uh, most patients are aware of either some sort of pharmacological, which is usually the drugs that one takes, painkillers. One doesn't really think of, you know, data or analytics or even robotics. Tell us a little bit more about, you know, robotics. I mean, what are these solutions that you're offering? So, uh, in a way, uh, Conventionally, when we look at uh, treatment of uh, arthritis, uh, from uh, early intervention to management of, um, for management of pain to uh, replacement of joints, uh, the conventional method is now getting replaced by the robotic surgeries. And robotic surgery basically assist uh, the surgeon to improve patient outcome and uh, also for safety and efficiency. Uh, in a way, it also helps uh, make uh, insightful data-driven decisions for the healthcare. Uh. So essentially what you're saying is if a patient, for instance, decides to go in for knee replacement mm. through robotic surgery, uh, you know, the outcome of the operation can be, uh, you know, far better controlled and to ensure that it is an optimum outcome where the patient is actually in a much better shape. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you know, before we talk a little bit more about, you know, these newer age technologies, it's quite fascinating. Let's find out a little bit more about the problem of arthritis. I mean, you've come in here, you've been here a company uh, for almost two decades now in India. But uh, in terms of arthritis per se and managing arthritis, I mean, how large is the problem in, in India today? And what makes you as a company interested in really coming in and giving us some of those solutions? Yeah, so uh, first of all, you know, arthritis, if we look at the incidence of the, of the disease, uh, around 180 million people are, uh, are affected uh, by arthritis in India. And if you look at the WHO data, around 9.6% uh, of men and almost 18% of women are uh, at above the age of 60 have some form of uh, you know, symptomatic osteoarthritis. This disease is more prevalent uh, than women than men. Mm. And uh, the cause can be from various, but uh, definitely aging is one of them. Others are like, uh, you know, like lifestyle, obesity, or, uh, or kind of, uh, I would say, any kind of degeneration to, uh, uh, will lead to So, so lifestyle plays a major role, major you role, said. Yeah. Weight gain plays a major role, but so yes. does age, right? I mean, yes. when as part of the statistics, I was reading that, uh, and in fact, what you're saying, more than one third mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in terms of uh, women here in India are suffering from osteoarthritis. So um, when we talk about these kind of numbers, have we seen a big rise in the number of osteoarthritis cases here in India? 
Yeah, we are seeing, you know, if you look at the WHO data again, the prevalence is anything between 29 to 39 percent, 22 to 39 percent okay. as for the osteoarthritic cases in India. So, so it, it is a major challenge and one of the major cause for, <clears throat> for I would say, uh, you know, which can eventually lead to uh, loss of functional capacity and one of the make biggest cause for physical disability uh, can be osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when we talk about, you know, treatment options, as I mm -hmm. said, you know, most people think that, you know, they, they'll put a little bit of gel or maybe put an ice pack or a hot pack and uh, use physiotherapy, you know. People perhaps are not aware, patients perhaps are not aware, and myself included, uh, about the kind of treatment options which are available. So explain mm -hmm. to us the curve. I mean, when a patient, for instance, uh, starts developing knee pain, I mean, what should he or she typically do? Mm -hmm. And is surgery ultimately an option which can give him or her some relief? Yeah, so first of all, you know, when a patient uh, with the onset of pain, patient would definitely <clears throat> consult their uh, healthcare professional, the surgeon <coughs> or the orthopedician. Uh, the, there are uh, early intervention uh, available for management of the pain. And if the early intervention for some reason do not work, uh, then it, the, the surgical intervention is considered which is like partial or a total knee replacement in case of knee or any other joints, it is uh, the total replacement as well. The early intervention can help uh, prolong the, the surgery on a case-by-case -case basis, but uh, if the, the replacement of the joint is required, that's where conventionally we are seeing an increased use of robotics uh, to improve patient outcome. That's very interesting <coughs> because, you know, there are a lot of people mm. and that includes people in my own family who are reluctant to go in for any sort of surgical intervention mm -hmm. because they're afraid of the pain that happens, you know, what's going to be my post-operative recovery, uh, will I actually be able to walk normally again? How are these new technologies helping in that case? Yeah, so first of all, <clears throat> you know, when, when uh, you know, the, the implants are recommended <clears throat> by the surgeon, one has to... Uh, one of the things that is considered is, is the ODEP. And ODEP is uh, the orthopedic uh, data evaluation panel. Uh, like everything that we do, there is uh, a rating. Like in anything that we buy today, we refer to a lot of ratings. So o ODEP is one such rating which helps, uh, you know, kind of, or gives some kind of an indication towards the performance of the implant. And uh, you will see that you know, ODEP is a standard which is delivered, uh, kind of developed against, uh, you know, or rather agreed standard. It's a measurement of the, it's a, it's a, I would say an independent measurement of, uh, of uh, uh, implant performance against mm -hmm. agreed standards. And uh, surgeon use this, uh, you know, ODEP rating for communicating to the patient about so, yes. so you're saying any joint, for instance, if I'm uh, told or somebody is told that they need to have their knees replaced or one of their knees replaced, that particular joint which is being replaced by this, uh, you know, by a joint, for instance, from your company or for some other company, it would have an ODEP rating. Every joint has a, has a kind of ODEP rating if it is kind of participating in that orthopedic uh, data evaluation panel. Most of the you know, global companies do have that. So if you see, usually most of the surgeons will also kind of refer to the autoperative while communicating to the patients. So how can I use that information, for instance, as a <coughs> patient? I mean, can I ask the surgeon? You can discuss that with the surgeon, definitely. But mm -hmm. the surgeon will also consider many other factors. The best person to decide on, on the joint will be the surgeon who would consider the, the clinical conditions as well as the, you know, the, the patient's need. And at the same time, he will also refer to the autoperating to make a decision. Okay, so one is that, you know, as a patient or rather as a doctor, you should take a look at the ODEP ratings to really see whether these are meeting those standards which have been set uh, perhaps internationally, uh, yes. to put it simply. Um, and the other aspect, uh, so one is the quality of the joint uh, which is coming in and replacing, uh, you know, my existing joint. Uh, the other aspect is, is really in, in terms of, you know, you mentioned analytics and robotics. Now, how does that change an outcome? Because, um, you know, previously when knee replacement surgeries were done, uh, patients, uh, you know, there was a lot of pain factor, there was a lot of tightness as well in the knee, they couldn't walk as well. Perhaps, you know, these are some of the misconceptions that people have. You know, how does using data really help in ensuring the alignment is correct and the outcome is to the optimum for a patient? 
So, in the in the robotic, what happens is that it basically assists the surgeon with a lot of uh, you know insights, the data insights, clinic which from which the surgeon can derive, and also it it kind of uh, replaces that eyeball you know assessment to a more uh, you know uh, scientific data driven uh, decision making, which ultimately helps the patient outcome. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to access this kind of latest high-end technology, most of it would only be available, would I be correct in saying, in tertiary care, hospitals, large hospitals, in urban uh, cities, I mean, cities uh, such as a Delhi or a Mumbai. I mean, what's the kind of accessibility one has seen uh, for patients to be able to use these kind of technologies? Yeah, so fundamentally, <clears throat> if I look at joint replacement, a joint replacement uh, conventionally used to happen uh, in the tertiary uh, centers and these tertiary centers are mostly in the metropolitan cities. Whereas we are also seeing a lot of private investment going into the tier 1 and tier 2 cities where new tertiary centers are coming up and they are also you know kind of uh, building uh, medical technology kind of uh, ecosystem to help uh, patients to get the best of treatments. So in a way, uh, I would say the conventional uh, treatment is available almost uh, most of the important cities in the country, whereas robotics uh, is growing and increasing both in the in the metropolitan cities as well as the the tier two cities. Okay, so these conventional treatments that includes odeprated joints as well. I mean, I could go in for a yes. knee replacement in in a in a non-urban area as well. Absolutely. Okay, so I would say no, I won't call it a non-urban area, but definitely it's a tier two city where mm -hmm. one can get it. Okay, but it will definitely have uh, need to have a tertiary care center. But that's what we are seeing, you know, over the past uh, few years, there has been significant increase in the tertiary care centers in the country. Okay, that's uh, that's good to know uh, because and, access yeah. to medical facilities yeah. uh, and doctors is is a yeah. rarity yeah. Uh, in our country. In and fact, uh, oh. that is actually driven also by by the by the Ayushman Bharat kind of program where you know, uh, the demand side affordability is addressed and, and as a result, uh, there are a lot of tertiary care centers coming up in the smaller cities. Okay, in fact, I was going to ask you a little mm. bit about affordability because yeah. that's another thing that keeps people away, mm. you know, they're not sure how much it's going to cost. <coughs> uh, how is that sort of uh, uh, graph changed over, over time with in some way, of these schemes? In a, in a way, if you see today, uh, if you look at affordability, that issue has been addressed largely through kind of a regulation within the country where uh, you know certain uh, pricing has been determined by the government through which you know these joints are available across the country at the same uh, you know uh, pricing so in a way <clears throat> that that's a major step forward apart from that uh, there is also increase in uh, insurances <clears throat> whether it is coming from uh, the government uh, run insurance programs uh, like the Ayushman Bharat or any state run programs. Similarly, the, the Mediclaim and, and the private medical insurance also is growing. So in a way, affordability concern has been addressed uh, uh, to a large extent. On that note, let's take a quick break. You're watching our special show, India Against Arthritis. Stay with us. Zimmer Biomet presents India Against Arthritis in association with News 18 Network. Zimmer Biomet presents India Against Arthritis in association with News 18 Network. Welcome back to our special show, India Against Arthritis, where today we are catching up with the Managing Director of Zimmer Biomet. Kostov, let's continue with our conversation. Affordability has been uh, addressed. <coughs> Technology has really moved forward to improve the outcomes. As you said, you're using mm. data and analytics as well. What about awareness? I mean, we are talking about India Against mm. Arthritis. How would you say the awareness graph has changed? Yeah, so this, there's a lot of work to do. Signaling awareness has happened, but I think it is not enough. There's a lot, lot of work to do surrounding it. And we, will, we feel this is the right time to do it uh, because uh, uh, once the awareness happens among, among all the population, they know what is the you know, solution available to a problem like this. I feel uh, patients will and the population will be better off. And, mm. and, as, and what we will also feel that we will in, induce kind of mobility for all those people who are facing challenges in kind of physical 
functional, a loss of functional capacities. Yeah. Indeed, and that's mm. a very real concern because our aging population is only increasing. And what we've seen is that in developed countries, for instance, osteoarthritis is managed much better because people have access and are willing to use surgical options as opposed to here in India. Would you agree? Yeah. So, uh, so if you look at uh, India as such, uh, there has been uh, a lot of work done and uh, we are at the right time, you know, doing this in a sense, uh, this was much needed to build the awareness across the country. Uh, when government is making a lot of efforts surrounding uh, the, the affordability. And what we also see that, uh, yes, there has been a lot of fear uh, about surgical procedure. But that is also, you know, will be resolved through through creating awareness. And most importantly, once uh, once the population come to know about the various treatment options available to them, and the outcome of such uh, you know uh, treatments, uh, eventually I believe. Uh, uh, it will help us increase the awareness in the country. Indeed, because it's women who are getting impacted the most. Yeah. Uh, I mean, those above the age of 65, uh, more than a third are uh, down with osteoarthritis and there's been no study per se. This could just be the tip of the iceberg. So, um, in terms of awareness amongst women uh, as a key patient group which is suffering mm. from arthritis, I mean, as a company, have you done some further analysis or what's your understanding of feedback from the medical fraternity? No, we are not really, you know, segregating that based on gender, uh, but we are you know, focusing on creating awareness in general. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, once the awareness gets created, whether it's for men or women, anybody who suffers will be able to, you know, access the treatment mm -hmm. or at least look for a solution and talk to their surgeons. Right, because post the pandemic, I think health has become a huge focus. So yes. people are paying more and more attention to those joint pains, which all Correct. of us have had, especially after suffering from COVID. Correct. So um, do you think, again, this is a right time, as you said, for companies such as yours to put forward and really push the awareness agenda as far as arthritis is concerned? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and in terms of, you know, where, you know, this problem is only going to grow as far as uh, arthritis is concerned, because as I said, we have an aging population. So in terms of the biggest mindset change that you think people need to make and patients need to be aware of who are perhaps mm. watching the show today, what do you think that needs to be? The first of all, you know, it is all about, you know, lifestyle adjustment to make sure that, you know, we focus on wellness and not have the disease in the first place. And once, you know, somebody you know experiences that 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 pain then it is important to go and connect to the surgeon and discuss the clinical conditions yeah because women treated. tend to suffer in Correct. silence as you said not gen it's gender yeah. agnostic but yeah. typically they go later to the doctor Correct. okay so get so, treatment on time yes and our, that's where early intervention helps uh, you know uh, and so that you know one can not get to that stage uh, and avoid a surgery or prolong a surgery as long as it can. In fact, a lot of people believe that they should actually <clears throat> delay surgeries. But do you think the outcome is actually improved if they get the surgery earlier at an optimum time when, you know, they're still uh, in a condition in which they can undergo the surgery as opposed to later? Because that's another myth, perhaps, a misconception that people have. Yeah, ideally, one has to get the surgery based on the surgeon's advice, definitely at the right time. Uh, not an early or late, uh, getting it at the right time is important. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit more about Zimmer Biomet. I mean, it is a company which, as I said, has been here for two decades and you actually focus and specialize in the orthopedic space. So you've mentioned about robotics. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other solutions that you also offer in this space? Actually, we have a complete comprehensive solutions for any, uh, you know, uh, orthopedic uh, uh, ailment. But uh, in India, we have a presence with our uh, joint replacement, which is, uh, which can be for the knee or the hip or the shoulders. Similarly, we have uh, a presence with uh, sports medicine as a portfolio. And uh, we have, have the complete uh, offering of uh, robotics, uh, as well as some of the surgical capital equipments that is necessary for conducting those surgeries. So in a way, we have presence across the care continuum, whether it is perioperative, interoperative or post-operative. Okay, so orthopedics is your speciality and you're really offering the entire uh, spectrum of solutions because mm -hmm. 
just like unfortunately India has become the diabetic capital or it keeps uh, you know vying with China uh, for that top spot uh, do you think we are actually looking at an epidemic almost as far as osteoarthritis is concerned we won't call it an epidemic but the fact is uh, you know uh, the prevalence is high uh, all it requires is uh, is to create more awareness to prevent first and then if the disease happens then to treat so mm. so so it can be managed uh, with right uh, information uh, among the population indeed because your uh, tagline as a company mm. is uh, what i found really interesting is to alleviate pain and improve the quality of life for people around the world mm. and pain is something that people with arthritis continue to live with yeah actually that is our mission to alleviate pain uh, and and uh, uh, improve quality of life for people around the world and this is something we do with uh, you know our predefined uh, uh, strategic pillars and uh, our culture promises and guiding principles that's wonderful because in our campaign of uh, india against arthritis this is a key aspect because pain is something that arthritis patients live with day in day out but they needn't live with that um costav if i can ask you to share your message to our viewers today as part of our campaign of india against arthritis what would you like to tell them my message will be uh, focus on wellness focus on preventing and if at all uh, the incidence incidence of the disease is there then consult uh, your surgeon and do it as quickly as possible rather than delaying it consulting the doctor early is better indeed costa banerji many mm. thanks for joining us the managing director of zimmer biomed india who is playing uh, the company is playing a critical role in india's fight against arthritis because unfortunately as a nation we seem to be more prone to osteoarthritis and we are seeing growing numbers particularly amongst women but the good news is solutions are out there and you needn't suffer in pain thank you so much for joining us on this special show Zimmer Biomet presents India against arthritis in association with News 18 Network. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.